We're going to spend four Sundays starting today just talking about the holiness of God. Psalm 99 verse 5 says, Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his footstool. He is holy. Verse 9 of the same psalm says, Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy hill. For the Lord our God is holy. You know, there are various facets to the nature of God, to the character of God. God is a good God. But then also, that quality or that nature of God, that character of God, God desires it to be reproduced in us and also revealed through us. So let's state this. A correct revelation of His nature will evoke the correct or the right kind of response from us that draws us to Him. That aspect of His nature is reproduced in us and is revealed through us. We need to have a correct revelation of God so that we have the right response to Him. But if you want to talk about holiness, and what is this holiness of God? We can try to articulate it in this manner. It is absolute sinlessness. It is absolute purity. It is absolute truth because anything that's a lie cannot be part of holiness. It is absolute faithfulness because anything that breaks covenant or breaks word cannot be part of God's nature. It's absolute justice or justice and righteousness are the same word. It's absolute love because love does not rejoice in sin and therefore cannot be part of God's holiness. It is absolute goodness. Anything unkind cannot be part of holiness. It's absolutely sacred. Anything profane cannot be part of His holiness. It's absolute perfection. So holiness, it's the very nature of God. And it's that aspect of God's nature that is mingled with every other facet of His nature. Now, for God, that's His nature. But what about holiness of created things like you and me? God designates certain things like holy. He designates certain days as holy. Certain places as holy. First and foremost as people as holy. So holiness for you and me is our willingness to be set apart for the one who is most holy. But here's the important thing I want to talk about. And we will stress on part three of the sermon. Is holiness is first and foremost a heart thing. Here's another thing about the holiness of God. Another way to look at it. Holiness is God's beauty. I'll just pick one example here in Exodus 28 verse 2. Uh, God is telling Moses about you know, what clothes to give the priests. And he says, you shall make holy garments for Aaron. Aaron was going to be the priest. For glory and for So holiness should draw us to God, not repel us from God. So how holy is God? Exodus 15, 11 says, He is glorious in holiness. But this is interesting, this is important. That knowing God in His holiness is the place of the fear of God. And it's in that place that you have wisdom and understanding. On this close with two more thoughts here. What about the holiness and goodness of God? Like we said earlier, every facet of God's nature, even His goodness, is mingled with holiness. God can never be good in the sense of compromising His holiness. So as we just close this introduction this morning, what if you and I were to meet with the holy God? We saw Isaiah's response. He said, God, I am undone. Other people like Ezekiel and Daniel and John, when they had a revelation of God, the Bible says they were down on the ground as dead. And it is God who then gives us the grace to stand freely with confidence in His presence. It is God who then bestows on us the grace to become partners with Him in His mission.